We are going to be talking about the basics of insurance, auto, home, and renters. Because I find that lots of people know they have the insurance and they know parts of it, but they don't know the details of it or the reasons why. So we're going to kind of go through the, um, we're going to go through the three of them. We're going to start with auto insurance. One of the questions that I get often is, why isn't mine as inexpensive as my friends? And it's because auto insurance about 10 years ago changed from like straight rates based on age of the car to it also being based on credit. So that changes. Every single quote that's given runs what's called a CPG and it's a customer's credit rating. What the statistics show is that the worse your credit is, the more likely you are to have a claim on your car. Yes, so that's why they have started using that, as well as age. Under 25 is the most expensive because you tend to be the most dangerous. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, and I really think when I talk to people who have 16 and 17 and 18 year old drivers, and when I think back to the days I started driving, what I know is that even as a really good driver at 16 years old, what you are lacking is the experience of a person who is 30 or 40. And the experience is what keeps us out of accidents more often than not. And the younger the people are, um, the more likely it is that they will get into some kind of an accident. It also has become that people over 70, 75 start to see their insurance rates go up because they also have a tendency to be in more accidents. So that's one of the things that we can look forward to. So between like 30 and 60, that's where the rates are the lowest. Um, where you live makes a difference. My rates out in the country of Waiwega are different than those people that would live in Wapaka, simply because the amount of traffic and the amount of people. Number of miles that you drive a year, if you drive less than 7,500 a year, and if you do and you don't have that on your insurance, you need to call your insurance person because that is called um, casual driving or occasional driving, recreational driving, and you get a better rate just because you put on less miles. Type of vehicle makes a difference. Classic cars, a little bit more expensive to fix. Um, yeah. High-end cars, more expensive to fix. Newer cars are more expensive to fix. My old things, my 2000 truck and my 2005 Jetta, far less expensive. Absolutely. Yeah. Far more. You also, in a claim, are far more likely to file a claim to get it fixed than I am. If I get a scrape, am I going to file a claim on a car that's 10 years old? Yeah, probably not. Yeah. I mean, if it's a major accident, sure I will. But if it's minor, I've hit three deer. And one of them did some damage to the truck. We're not going to worry about getting it fixed. One did $1,800 damage to the car. That was a claim. So that's a little bit different with the age of cars. Your driving record um, makes a huge difference. Speeding tickets, um, claims, comp claims, which we will get into, don't matter unless you've had three deer inside 12 months. Um, but collision claims that are your fault do make a difference. Credit history, others on policy. The more drivers you have on a policy, especially the younger ones, the more it'll go up. 
as someone has a 16-year-old that gets a license, I always tell them, don't let them get the license. Um, because they will see their rates double or better just by adding a young driver. All of this information came from AARP. So I did recognize the websites that I got the information from. So now we're going to go through these um, very quickly. Liability covers the damage that you, that you do to someone else, whether it is um, personal injury, you have hurt them, you've hurt their car, you've hurt their garage door, their trees, whatever it is, that's what liability pays for. It's written as, and this is one of the numbers that people understand, it's written as three numbers. So some of us will have 100, 300, 100, 250, 500, 100, 300, 100 is probably the minimum that you should do. Those numbers mean the first number is one person's bodily injury. The second number is bodily injury per accident. So if it's more than one person, so if it's 100, 300, you get 100 per person, 300 per accident. And the 100 on the end, or whatever you have, is for property damage. Lots of people say, there's no way I need more than 25,000 in property damage. Get into an accident with a fairly new pickup truck that costs $60,000 to replace. If you only have 25 in property damage, the insurance is going to come back after you and you get to pay the additional 35,000. So that is something to keep in mind. You will see it. We have a, we actually have, um, and we can flip to it on page, I don't have any idea, um, on the last page. We have the auto policy. I find a, found a sample. The last, okay, the last page. I found a sample. And this is the way um, this is the way this is listed on most policy declarations. So the liability insurance is on top. And sometimes you'll see it in three lines like that, and sometimes you'll see it in one line, like 100 slash 300 slash 100 or however you however you do that. That's right on top. That's really, really high. Um, okay. Are you sure that's not? Do you own a home? Yeah. Yeah. I would talk to your insurance agent because you could not. Say you have a million in bodily injury. Talk to your agent because if that's your liability insurance and you own a home, you would be better off cutting that and getting an umbrella policy, and it would be less expensive. That's what I have is an umbrella policy. And they're, ne they're necessary. They just are. Mm -hmm. they're, if you own a house, it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it check with them, because if you're at a million in bodily injury for your liability, that is huge. I don't see anything above 250. Mm -hmm. And the umbrella will take care of the difference. So. Um, liability is, is one of those things that you have to carry. I mean, by law, if you have to carry, unless your car is in storage for the winter. Well, I have storage that costs me $60 some dollars. One of my, my coverage is supposed to be for fire or something. Well, they you, your coverage. You're covered, you're covered for anything that happens to your car while it's in storage. Right. So if the garage roof falls on it, um, homeowner's insurance covers the garage roof, your comp on your car covers the damage to the car or windstorms or hail, anything that happens while the car's in storage. Uninsured and underinsured motorists, it are now laws that you have to, um, you have to carry that kind of insurance. You can do 2550 and 5100. Uninsured would be 5100, 50,000, 100,000. Underinsured is 2550, those cover those pick up where the other person's insurance leaves off to cover any claims or costs of the accident. Okay? 
Um, medical payments, um, lots of people, the, the common one is 10,000 on this. What that covers is you or anyone riding in your car if they're injured in an accident, covers the first $10,000 of any medical bills. Collision insurance is defined as an accident with another vehicle, with someone's garage, with anything that you hit that is, um, that is an object and not an animal. On the other hand, comp is deer and it's wind and it's hail and it's all of those kinds of things that don't involve an accident. And the comp is what you carry on your car over the winter for storage. And then rental reimbursement, if you need to rent a car because yours is in the shop, this will do that. You do have to pay for the first day or two, depending on your insurance. And then your insurance will kick in and pay up to X amount of dollars after that. And that's a nice, that is not something you have to have, but it is something that um, is a fairly good idea. Something else that isn't listed on here that is an excellent idea, I learned this the hard way, is emergency roadside service. Yeah, it's a really good idea. It's like 83 cents a month. I ended up getting towed in January, $89.25. Yeah, that would have covered nine years. <laughs> um, so actually more than that, it would have, yeah, nine years. Um, they will change out a battery. They will tow you to the nearest shop that can fix your car. So if you have something like a Jaguar that has to go to a specialty place, they will actually tow it further to find a garage that can work on your car. They'll do all kinds of things, including tow, including get you out of a ditch. <laughs> so that's kind of nice to, that's kind of nice to know. Any questions on your auto insurance? You should, you should also review it, all insurances, and you hear me say this about absolutely everything we talk about, should be reviewed once a year, just to make sure that they are exactly what you need and what you want, okay? Back to the next page. It's the basics of homeowner's insurance. For many years, I carried homeowner's insurance, and I understood it kind of but I didn't understand it completely. And that it is something that a really good insurance agent that you trust will just say, you know, here's what you need. How much stuff do you have that's, that you have worth for? Here's what you should schedule. But understanding it, I think, is a great idea as far as um, making the decision yourself about whether or not you have adequate coverage. So always keep in mind that your agent's job is to answer your questions, if you have any. The dwelling coverage protects against the damage of your house. So when the shingles all blew off my house in the wind several years ago, it was the dwelling coverage that covered that. Had we gotten rain, that came in because you know there would have been leaks caused by the roof then anything that was covered as far as structurally inside the house as my dwelling coverage any of the um, if I would have had any of my personal property that would have been damaged that would have been my contents coverage and these usually go once you've determined a dwelling coverage and what you need to have is something called guaranteed replacement most agents write that automatically. You always have a choice not to do it. Guaranteed replacement means that if you are, if your house is worth today 150 and the market increases or you did a, do a little bit of work on it and next year it's worth 160 and it burns in a fire, if you have guaranteed replacement cost coverage, it will cover the entire 160. If you don't, you're going to get 150 out of it and you're going to be $10,000 out. Other structures on your property include sheds, detached garages, anything else that's on your property normally goes 10% of your dwelling coverage. So again, if you have 150,000 on your house, 15,000 automatically covers any other structures. 
with my house, 10% does not cover my additional structures because I have my barns for the horses and tractor and all of that kind of stuff. So we have additional coverage to make sure that those structures are covered. So if you have structures that are worth more than 10% of your house, then you need to talk to your agent and you need to get a little bit of additional coverage on that. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Contents coverage is anything I own. That also usually goes, it can go from 50 to 80% of your home's value will replace your dishes and your sofas and beds and you know collectibles or and all of that kind of stuff. If you have expensive jewelry like wedding sets, most people have those scheduled. If you have expensive collectibles, John has his collection of trains. So if we added up everything in our house, our contents coverage wouldn't cover it. So then you need to start scheduling because that is insurance above and beyond your actual contents, okay? So if your house burns down, you're automatically gonna get a check for your contents coverage. But if stuff is destroyed, if that doesn't cover it, and you don't have anything scheduled, you're gonna be out of luck on that. Do keep in mind that if you wanna schedule something, you need to have it appraised because they need an appraisal on file to show what it's really worth. They won't just take your word for it. Darn it anyway. Loss of use covers um, renting, a it covers rental and it covers food. If you have lost the use of your house for any of the reasons that are covered, um, Flood is not covered in this area. There are very few of us. Some along the river need flood insurance. Most of us don't. And it isn't provided by your agent. It is provided by, there's a federal flood insurance program that came about after Katrina, after Hurricane Katrina. So that is what is, that is a separate coverage. But you need to understand what is covered around here and make sure that any perils that may happen to your house are actually covered because some of them are and some of them are not. So if the whole city flooded, major flood, would people be out of luck then? Yep, yeah. they would be out of luck if it was flood. Now, let's say you have a basement and you have sump pumps and you have a huge storm and the sump pumps quit and your basement floods. You're covered because the sump pumps are covered. So it's going to kind of it's going to kind of depend. If the entire city of Wapaka, there would be emergency funds that would come in. But in that kind of flood, yeah, no, you're not covered. And the really sad part is, flood insurance can be most can be pretty expensive. Cities like New Orleans live underwater. I mean, they're they're under sea level, mm -hmm. and the vast majority of those people did not carry flood insurance. It is, it is very costly, but if you're living under sea level or if you're living near um, a river and your basement is under the level of the river, it makes sense to have some flood insurance coverage. Do you think our insurances are going to go up with all this horrible weather out in the southwest? Yep. Several, yep, several years ago when Florida was hit so hard by hurricanes, there was what, three or four of them in the season? Mm -hmm. Everybody's insurance rose by 10 or 15% that year because the insurance companies needed to make up what they'd lost. Plus, we had trouble getting insurance. We had a house down there at the time. We, all, we had insurance through State Farm, but we didn't have insurance through the city. Mm -hmm. Created a separate company and put all of our houses into the separate state farm com company. And if you didn't have insurance, you had trouble finding it. We have um, my husband's best friend lives in Orlando, mm -hmm. which is in the middle of the state. Right. Yeah, we were there. And it had just incredible damage from in one of those hurricanes. Mm -hmm. And the insurance company paid for it, but then they canceled them. So he had to scramble to find more insurance. Oh, yeah. You we're know? Lucky. Our, our area got damaged. Ah. We had like we had about 15 people with us in our house because the park next door was evacuated and we used to live there. So a bunch of our friends came over. Sure. For three days we had 15 people in our house sitting on the floor. <laughs> that was a mobile court next to them. Next to us was a mobile court, yeah. yeah. But we were in a stick house. 
So you're, scared. You're, oh yeah, you're far safer. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, personal liability protection. Here's something that people tend to overlook. Your homeowner's insurance usually just by default puts in um, either 100,000 or 300,000 liability. Let's say somebody comes over to your house uninvited, decides to climb up on your garage roof, roof, falls off and breaks his neck. Guess whose homeowner's insurance policy gets to cover that? Same way with pools. That's why fences are required around pools. Um, so liability protection is one of those things that having either an umbrella or a million dollars in liability, it is nothing for someone who gets hurt on your property to surpass a million dollars. I mean, it just, just is nothing. Now, if it isn't your fault, you can fight it. In your insurance, in your liability coverage, you are covered for the lawyer expenses to fight whatever went on. But if you have dogs that bite, I don't care if it's a chihuahua or if it's a Rottweiler, you know, there are some, you know, like pit bulls. There are very few. State Farm is one of them that covers pit bulls. Lots of them don't unless you have specific fences. American Family will cover pit bulls as long as you have a fence that is at least five foot tall. But guess what? If somebody climbs the fence and gets bit by the pit bull, who are they going to go after? They're going to go after your homeowner's insurance. So, you know, if we have a tendency to have 100000 the saddest truth about it is that if somebody gets really hurt on your property, it's going to cost your insurance company a whole lot less if they die than if they live. And it's the same way with cars because lifelong disability for someone who has been injured seriously is, I mean, it's a real drain. So being careful up front is always a great idea, um, but having enough coverage is a necessity. And then medical payments covers with um, covers medical. If somebody slips on your icy sidewalk, not if not public sidewalks, but your personal sidewalks, um, they're going to come after you, and the medical payments coverage will cover that. Liability will kick in once your medical payments are done. We have a thousand dollars on medical payments because we have the liability, so it'll kick in, so it's still covered. So when my friend Jeannie. When my horse Maggie tripped and Jeannie tried really hard to get out of the way and she ended up falling on her hand on a rock and broke her one look at her wrist. We were broken. You know, I looked at, they're not supposed to be at that angle. Um, her, I mean, for her to have surgery and for the emergency room and all of that far surpassed my medical payments. Now. We have, I have things signed at my house that says, if you ride horse on my property, I am not personally liable. That's your, that's your liability. So I didn't have to pay for any of it, but the medical payments would have kicked in and then the liability after that. Okay. <coughs> um, we also, I also have, um, Back here, it's called Homes Are Us insurance coverage. That'll give you just an example of all the coverages. We have listed, you know, the coverage A, B, C, D, E, and F um, are listed and explained earlier in the page that we just went through. But it's also listed on here, and it gives you ideas, like the dwelling 179, other structures is 10%, is going to be 179. So that gives you an idea of what you're looking at when you go home and you compare that to your existing coverage. And we're gonna we're even going to get into we're even gonna get into umbrella and I don't have that. It's one of those missing page fours. <laughs> um, we're gonna get into a little bit of that because you are both homeowners and so I can make this a little specific. Um, but we'll do that after we do renters. Renters insurance is something most renters don't carry. All the years that I rented apartments never had renter's insurance. Renter's insurance does a couple of very important things. So if you have family members or you, you have friends that are renters, 
if they don't have renter's insurance are two very, three very important reasons they should have it. First of all, it's contents coverage. The landlord is not responsible to pay for your sofa if something happens to the building. If a mass flood comes through Wapaka and you live on ground floor and you are flooded, the landlord, the dwelling, covers the actual walls and floor. Your renter's insurance covers everything inside your apartment. Sofas and beds and all of that kind of stuff. That is probably the least important reason. The other thing to keep in mind is that homeowners, as well as renter's insurance, covers anything you're carrying around in your car that is not stock car. Lots of people will put new stereos in their car and because they're not permanently affixed, their vehicle insurance won't cover it. Renters or homeowners will. If you're living out of your car because somebody kicked you out and it's warmer than the doghouse, your renters or your homeowners will cover all of the contents of your car. Your car insurance covers the actual building. So that's an important reason. It's something people don't keep in mind. Um, the next really important reason to have renter's insurance is because it protects you against liability claims. You have a chihuahua. You have a friend come over. The chihuahua takes a bite out of an ankle. The person ends up in the emergency room. Liability insurance on the renter's policy is going to cover that. That's kind of a given. What people don't tend to realize is that if, an, and this just happened not very long ago, a gal left a hot pad too close to um, the stove. And she went off to do whatever, and I don't know how many times I have left the stove, and I get to doing something else, and it's past due, and I'm like, ah! And you go running back. And I've done the whole hot pad too close, and I've never caused a fire in an apartment, but I've done it enough that it just kind of taught me a lesson to keep it away. Um, when something like that happens, and it starts a fire, and there's now smoke damage in the apartment, your liability insurance covers that. The landlord's insurance will not. So the landlord will come after the renter, and you will end up having to pay the bill. In young people, in 18, 19, 20-year-olds, most landlords require a cosigner. If the renter doesn't have renter's insurance, they're going to go after the cosigner. In this particular instance, mom and dad got to foot the bill with this, and their homeowners didn't cover it. It wasn't, I mean, it isn't part of the homeowner's policy. So that's the biggest reason that people don't understand that they really need rental policies. It is becoming pretty commonplace that landlords require them in order for you to move into the, into the apartment because they want to make sure that their dwelling is protected against anything stupid <laughs> that us renters can do. Renter's insurance runs about a hundred bucks a year. Not a big deal. Um, the other thing, the other thing to keep in mind that I have found often is that especially if your credit is so-so, if you get auto insurance and you bundle that with renter's insurance, you actually can get both policies often for less than just the car insurance. Just because when you bundle policies with any insurance company, you start to get some pretty hefty discounts. I run into people that have their homeowners one place and all their vehicles another, and I always encourage them to go to one company or the other and get everything bundled just because it's going to cost less money in the long run to do that. Um, and renter's insurance provides temporary living expenses. Same flood in Wapaka, and you're out of your apartment. Renter's insurance is going to cover you to rent a place until your apartment is livable again. I imagine if you have a business, I would think they would require a rent. No? I doubt it. 
Most landlords in Wapaka don't. You go to Madison or Milwaukee or Appleton. Yeah, you should ask him. There's some really good reasons for him to spend a little bit of extra money. And if he has a car and he's got car insurance. He has a car. I have no idea if he has car insurance. Yeah. You know, one thing that I have never, ever done is not had car insurance. Yep, and it'll and it costs you, but you're grateful when you have it, when you really need it. It's one of those. It's it's one of those hazardous necessities. So, we have a little bit of extra time. We're gonna. By the way, there's also a renters. Um, it's called active quote on here. We'll show you what renters insurance. So you can show this to your grandson and say, Sonny boy. Um, not a bad idea, Grandma. <laughs> you know, it's not exactly a new television in his apartment, but it's far more valuable than. Um, okay, you know. his renter's insurance would cover the cell phone, so he could drop the cell phone insurance and get renter's insurance, and it'll still cover it. Mm -hmm. But it was real small, so we couldn't put all our wedding gifts and so forth in there. And so we stored them in the folks' attic, along with our seasonal clothes and all the other goodies. And we took out additional insurance on our items in my folks' home. And now some of that is covered automatically, and you may need more if it's long-term storage. Mm -hmm. um, but homeowners' policies will cover your um, stuff if it's stored somewhere else for a limited amount of time. So, I mean, you just need, <coughs> if you're a 25 year old and you're living at home with your parents, if you are paying rent of any sort, they say, you know what, you need to pay the phone bill or you need to pay the electric bill or you need to give us $100 for food. Legally, the homeowner's insurance that the parents have does not have to cover any of the kids' stuff because they're renters. So would it most of the time, sure, because are you gonna fess up to your insurance company that your son or daughter is paying rent? No, but if they find out, then um, they're gonna go after. So even with young people that are still living at home, especially if, we can, if the insurance company can get them a really good deal on it, we will bundle the two. That way I know their stuff is covered. I also know it's covered if it's in their car. And it's covered, you know, no matter what. If it's covered, if some of it is at someone else's house, you know, however that goes. And then their stuff is covered because the last thing you want to do is cause trouble with your insurance company. So, umbrella insurance. When you have homeowners and auto insurance, at the same place. You have both coverages. I have that. Home and auto are all under one company. And you have umbrella. I don't know. Umbrella is using the term. I don't Your know. umbrella insurance is literally an umbrella that covers anything above and beyond what your car and your homeowner's insurance covers. Okay? So they will they will require higher insurance limits on automobiles um, instead of like the 100 300 that's very that's very common they'll go to 50 500 what's nice about umbrella insurance versus putting additional insurance on either your autos or your home as far as liability is that it will cover all of it so if you get into an accident and someone is injured to the point where they are now disabled for the rest of their life. You're 100 or 300 or 250 or whatever on your car, that's not even gonna come close to what that costs. The umbrella policies 
which are written for a min minimum of a million dollars most places, covers everything above and beyond the limits of your car insurance. Same way with your homeowners. Let's say you have a $300,000 liability and someone gets bit by a dog and it costs, they have to have seven, we've heard, we've seen on the news where someone gets so maimed like a child that they need 17 surgeries to repair and you know they're going to get not only the medical bills but they're going to get the pain and the suffering and loss of work to the parents well beyond that. Umbrella insurance will cover anything above and beyond what your homeowner's insurance does. It runs a couple of hundred dollars a year so it's probably less expensive to put it to put an umbrella on your home and auto than it is to increase your home and your autos independently. So it's a great idea if it's something that, if it's what you have, it'll be in your insurance papers at home because it'll come with your homeowner's insurance. Um, if you don't have it, it is something that I encourage you very strongly to go talk to your insurance agent about. See if you can do some, if you have that high of liabilities on your auto insurance, you can probably cut those liabilities and get the umbrella and you're just as well protected and you may find that you save some money besides. That would hurt. Save money. Oh, yeah, that's always, you know, we want to get the best insurance we can, but we need to get it at the best rate we can. If you're shopping for insurance, one of the best things that you can look for is a company that's been around for a long time. I don't care if you're talking about home, auto, life, I don't care what it is. The longer a company has been around, the more solid they are. One of the things with this Obamacare, and this, this exemplifies what I'm saying, is that Obamacare allowed a bunch of insurance companies, several of which were in Wisconsin, to open up and offer this Obamacare insurance. And they promptly went out of business six months later because the premiums were low. They didn't have enough money in the bank. And so with a couple of payouts, they ended up going broke and bankrupt. What happens to everybody else that has insurance there? Out of luck. You're out of luck. You know, you might be able to recover some of what you paid in as far as a claim. You're probably not. So the longer a company has been around, the better they're rated with things like Fitch and Moody's and Standard & Poor's are where insurance companies are rated. The more solid the company is, the more likely you're never going to have any problems with it. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, e-surance and Progressive and all of those are kind of nice. And the commercials tell you that they're really cheap. They're not necessarily all that inexpensive. And I have a hard time. I like being able to walk into my agent's office and saying, I have a problem. It's kind of hard for me to have trust that I'm not going to get blown off if I have to deal with an internet company. So that leaves me in a place now that you know everything you need to know about your auto and your home and your renters and your umbrella insurance and you have all kinds of ideas for grandsons. Um, what I open it up for questions.